This literally almost never happens to me. That's how wet this snow is. Whew. Well, good morning, my friends. Welcome back to part three of what it's really like to live off grid. Looks like I've been a little lucky today. Beautiful sunny morning. Whew. As you know, this is day two and I'm still not into the cabin yet. We got a lot of work to do today and apparently my timeline is thin. I was talking to a guy this morning. He said they're calling for freezing rain late this afternoon. The old big tool rack work light sure came in handy late last night. Charged her up again, full battery. So first things first, we gotta get the chains on the back of this tractor. We've got a pretty nice day. It was negative 10 this morning, but it's now got up to zero degrees, which is good and bad. We've already got packet snow, and I would have preferred frigid temperatures. Would have been a lot easier to blow it out of there. Once we get these chains on, we gotta hustle our butts back up to the steep hill, continue blowing out. I think there's one or two other smaller trees down that we can cut up with the limbing saw and get ourselves back out towards the concession road where that big pile of trees is hanging there in front of my ATV. I had to leave it there last night. Hey, so I am honestly not trying to sell you anything here, but I gotta tell you, these Aqualine Talon chains, awesome chains. You may recall my first set of chains was an H-pattern V-hook. Wicked, wicked traction. But they were kind of a standard chain, which you'd get from just about anybody. You know, big long lengths. Didn't really fit or hug the sidewall of the tire. You had to kind of cut them or try to make them fit or hug. These Aqualine chains, right out of the box, is exactly what you see. They literally hug the profile of the tire. You can't go wrong. The box pattern, much better than the H pattern, I think. And like most chains, yeah, there was extra links. We had to grind them off. Left myself a few just in case. But you see how beautiful that fit is around the tire and the sidewall? You just throw them on, center them, drive over them. And the connection in the middle is what they call S-links. You saw me connect it. It's literally that simple. You pull them out, throw them on the tire, lock them up. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of wire on here to tie these down so I just don't like them flapping around and then we're on our way. So if you're up for it, <laughs> I hope you'll stick around with me today. It's gonna to be a beautiful day and I bet you the forest is gonna be stunning. Let's roll. My next problem but for now let's just take care of those three or four at the top of the steep hill Just keeps coming. Here we go. <laughs> yep. Cabin in the woods. So many of you are probably wondering why I never put the chains on the tractor before I left for Christmas. I mean, I mounted all the rest of the snow equipment before I left. But I didn't mount the chains because last year and the year before, I didn't need the chains until probably sometime in January because we've had such little snow over the last few years this early in the winter. And you'd think, okay, it makes sense, but why didn't I put the chains on before I left to start blowing snow yesterday? It's because it was so late in the afternoon and I knew I had a lot of work to get done. And up here, it gets dark around quarter after four to 4.30. I remember I told you good folks in part one that I had about two and a half hours of daylight, but I was wrong. I actually had about an hour and a half of daylight. So I had to hustle. And I certainly didn't think I was gonna have a problem on that hill until I started to realize just how wet and heavy and slick this snow was. All 
right, my friends, you're about to see the magic of tire chains. I'm gonna blow right up the steepest part of this hill, get myself up there. Let's do it. Low range four wheel assist. Kind of a funny story. While you folks were with me till late last night trying to get that tractor up the steep hill and clear snow, a neighbor had borrowed Guy's Kubota L series. And unfortunately, on the way back, I guess he misjudged a turn on one of the private drives and he put the L series into a ditch. So while we were out here trying to clear snow last night, Guy and a few other neighbors with a few pickup trucks were trying to pull that tractor out of the ditch. <laughs> There's never ever a dull moment up here. Alrighty, we're here. As our friends from last night, and hopefully, if it didn't get stolen, my ATV should be over there on the other side. I can't see it yet, but that's where I left it. Got my still 261 on the, the ATV. Got a couple of trees down. From the look of things, I'm probably best to go around the other side and start at the tip of the tree and work my way back. It's gonna take a while. It's just past noon, which means I have about four to four and a half hours of sunlight left. I've got tree straps, I've got a chain, I've got a couple of spare pair of gloves, and hey, I got you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna try to time lapse this because I have a feeling it's gonna take me a while and I'm by myself. Oh, and don't forget, we still have at least a quarter of a kilometer that way to blow out to the concession road, so I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> That clears them. I tried to get as many branches out of the snowpack as I could. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's been raining. Some of it freezing rain, some of it water for some time now while I've been out here doing this. So, honest to goodness, you can't get a better packet snow than we have right now. It's about four or five degrees out. Not helpful. That tractor has done an awesome job since yesterday afternoon but she's gonna really be put to the test trying to get through the rest of the way of this driveway out to the concession road. 
I've got the ATV right behind you. I'm going to try to make it through this pile of snow without snapping a shear pin. I'm pretty sure I got everything. That's why you probably saw me kicking in under the snow all over the place. And you can see I packed it down pretty good, so I'm not too sure how much I'm going to get up. But let's fire it up. Let's keep going. Daylight's burning. <laughs> you bet. It's been a few days since we finished cleaning up the driveway. I thought I'd wait to finish off this video. Because I kind of had a feeling this is what was going to happen. And I wanted you to see the driveway. And you could probably tell it's still raining. And it is. It hasn't stopped since the other day. But I thought maybe I'd wrap up this video just by summarizing a few points and all. Because I hope folks were not thinking I was trying to be negative on owning an off-grid cabin. And not at all. I love it. I still love it. It was quite an adventure, to say the least. But I thought I'd bring some closure to a few things before we wrap up. The neighbor guy eventually got the L-Series out of the ditch. They got it back to his shop. Something was broken on it, I can't remember what, but he had to weld it back. And other than that, it's back on the road again, blowing snow. Husky Bob didn't come up this week. I know a few of you in the comments on the very first video, and I think on the second, suggested that I should have called Husky because he's got those big camps of tracks on his ATV. And I would have called him, because he would have loved chopping through all that stuff to get me in. Snowshoes? Yep. Yeah. It's a pretty good idea. I've actually thought about it on and off, but I've never actually ever bought any. In fact, I was asking Guy, a neighbor Guy doesn't own any either, after all these years of being up here. But then again, his driveway's a little shorter than mine. The snowmobile? A few of you suggested it would have been wise when I got to the cabin just to take the snowmobile and my chainsaw back out to get rid of those trees. But I've done that a few times in the past, and yeah, I would have crushed through the snow, no problem. But the challenge was, when you've got trees down and you don't know how long, as you noticed in part of the video, some of those trees were frozen down into the snow. So you've got to throw a chain on it and drag them out, as I did with the tractor, and I don't like doing that with the snowmobile. Would have been a little more fun. Kind of one of the negative things of enjoying that adventure, though, is that throughout the two days that I was clearing those trees in the driveway, all you could hear in the background was the echoing of two-stroke engines everywhere in the area because everybody was out snowmobiling, which is probably where I should have been. But either way, I'm hopefully going to get out next week if we get some more snow. Neighbor guy's power? Well, the hydro guys did end up having to call in a helicopter. I tried to get a shot of it for you, but it was too far off in the distance. I couldn't get a good shot. But it's a pretty common occurrence up here. The power goes out regularly all year, but it goes out all the time up here in the winters. I mean, most of the distribution lines are running through forests, so it's not uncommon that it takes them a while to get it back in service. And it's usually not uncommon that they have to bring in a helicopter to fly over the forest to find the fault. But he got his power back the next day, and so far, knock on wood, he still got it. Another question that I know you folks had was, why did I bother going through all that in that type of weather? I actually tracked my way into the cabin. I was safely there. I could have just stayed for the week and then eventually made it back out to Guy's place or taken my time. And you're probably right, it's an option. But I did it for two reasons. One is because we had people coming up and I need to get them in because there's nowhere to park. And I don't like having to ask Guy if he, you know, minds three or four cars parked in his back woodlot. But the most important reason is 911. You've got folks down a mile in and you've got a foot and a half of snow and 10 trees in the middle and something bad happens. Nobody's getting in. And I know our emergency response people have special units. Units with skidoos, quads with tracks. They've got helicopters up here. But the lake's not frozen yet, so I don't think they could have landed a helicopter anywhere near me. And they certainly couldn't have got through with an ATV or anything on tracks because they'd have to get through the trees. So it's kind of important, especially when you've got a family, and it's another consideration when you buy a property or a cabin off-grid. 
you've got to consider the safety of yourself and your family. And what does happen in the event of an emergency? And do you have a path that you can get ambulance or fire or police in? It's an important consideration because it's not just your own life you're thinking about, it's those of your friends and your family as well. And a few of you mentioned I got myself some firewood. Well, there's no firewood in that stuff I cut up. I know that in some areas of the US, people burn softwood, but up here, nobody wants softwood. Nobody burns it. I can't give it away. And that's why I chucked it into the forest because nobody wants it. And hey, it's not always like that going in. That's one of the more severe adventures that I've faced over the years. But without exaggeration, it's a regular occurrence. Pretty much all year round, you're going to go every couple of weeks in the summertime, you're going to find a tree or two down in the driveway. And it's not a big deal because I always carry the chainsaw, it's dry out, you pull up. Sometimes they're small trees, sometimes they're big. And usually what I'll do is I'll just cut, you know, a six or seven foot gap in the tree, drag it out of the way and drive through. And then I come back later with the gravel and the tractor and the chainsaw. It's not a big deal. It's really the winter time that gets you. Because there's usually snow, not often that much, because I'm usually here every week. But you've got 10 trees down instead of one or two. And you've got varying sizes and it makes for a very long walk in. And a big adventure. 10 trees down, two feet of snow, that doesn't happen often. But regularly, almost weekly, you're gonna run across one or two or three trees. It's pretty much, you can almost guarantee every week when I come in, there's something in the driveway somewhere. So it always adds for some kind of an adventure. I love the property, but I was hoping that through this little series of videos, I would just give you a little taste of what it is like, because it's not a once in a winter occurrence. It's a weekly or bi-weekly occurrence. And I think there's a reason why timeshares have become so popular over the last few decades, because there's a lot of people that just don't want to have to do that. I find it enjoyable. I love being outside. I love the fact it took me two days to go through that. It's an adventure, and especially as we age, Exercise, fresh air, being out there, and being mobile and active, I think is really important. And for me, it's just something I love doing. I do. Now, am I going to love doing that 10 or 15 years from now? Yeah, I guess we'll see when we get there. But at the end of the day, to answer the question, if I had the opportunity to buy a different property, would I? Well, to me, the juice is worth the squeeze. Thanks a lot for sticking around on this adventure with me. I hope you found it enjoyable. Have a wonderful New Year's with your family. All the best of happiness and success. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers. Mm -hmm.